All right, we'll be hitting the road again, going to a uh, tough place to play in the SEC, which they all are. Uh, this is one of the challenging ones. Uh, they got a great environment. Um, Mark Stoops has done an incredible job there uh, with the program, uh, coming off a tough loss you know, against Vandy. And um, I know we'll get the response uh, from them that you would expect out of a, a team that's uh, the quality of Kentucky. You know, they've done a tremendous job the last two or three years with what he's done with the program. He's built it through uh, keeping players there, uh, developing players, um, extremely physical and tough. When you ask our kids over the last two years what the most physical game they played in, to a man, almost every one of them talks about how physical the Kentucky game was two years ago up there and then at our place uh, last year. You know, when they went on a 20-something play drive uh, against our defense to end the game, um, and their defense is one of the tops in the conference year in and year out, but uh, that way this year as well. So, Great challenge for us to go on the road, uh, tough environment, um, day game, and looking forward to the opportunity. Coach, yeah, I, have, I know you're big on logistics and stuff, and you mentioned it Saturday night. I just wonder how uh, it practically played itself out with you guys getting back so late, having to get ready for Kentucky uh, on Saturday night and Sunday. How did that end up working out and looking for you guys? Uh, I think we got back around 1.30, uh, back into Athens, and, uh, and yesterday was business as usual, fair for Kentucky. Kirby, Chris Rodriguez is coming off for one of his best games of the season. Just what makes him such an effective running back and a challenge for him? His willingness and love for contact. He seeks and cherishes contact, and it's uh, – it's that time of year where you know you watch defenses across the country and people turn down contact, they turn down hits. And we make a point to try to show it to our guys that as the year goes, tackling gets worse and worse and worse. Are we going to be hit by that contagious bug of, of you know, lack of a willingness to, to, to thud and tackle people, especially a, a, a guy that loves it. I mean, he seeks it. He wants to hit you. He, one of the most physical runners I've seen. It just seems like Kentucky always has uh, that guy. You know, Snell, Benning, Benning is that way. They're just, it, it, it almost feeds to their personality. Uh, and you watch and you're like, well, how do you get through that tackle? And you don't really know because he just keeps going when people hit him. And um, great challenge, great challenge to, uh, to be physical with this guy and match his love for contact. So specifically on, it, just to be clear, did he aggravate the high ankle sprain when he came back against Auburn and that's why he's been out since then? Can't say that for certain. Uh, the MRI and the x-rays uh, don't show that anything was done and he felt like he might have tweaked it some uh, and he, that slowed his progress some. Uh, but it's, it's a pain in the butt injury. Like I've talked about repeatedly, we didn't have an option to go do the tightrope and do the surgery that Tillman got, Tula got, uh, a Arian got. That wasn't an option. So it's been frustrating for him. Um, he wants to get back. Uh, he, he works really hard at it. He was better last week than he's been every week previous. He actually got to do individual drills last week and did some things. Um, but he's still not, uh, or at least last week, I don't know where he is this week because I haven't seen him yet, but he, uh, he was not where he could come out of breaks and do the things required to play receiver. Um, and that's tough. So uh, he, he stayed here. He got extra rehab here. Felt like he got a little better rehab here, not having to be on it uh, you know, all weekend and during the game. And so we're, we're, again, hopeful to get him back this week, but it'll be day by day. Kirby, y'all have won the East five out of six years. Just from your perspective, what does it take to sustain that kind of success through multiple recruiting classes, multiple different teams, that kind of thing? Well, it takes consistency and performance. It takes uh, commitment to excellence from your entire administration. It takes uh, physicality in this league. Um, it takes a really mature team to manage every game like it has a history and life of its own. And uh, well, that's you know what it takes, but it's not the be all and end all.
Coach Harris uh, mentioned coverage recognition is what he felt was one of the been one of the bigger improvements he's seen from the wide receiver core as the season moves along. Kind of what's been your, your view of that this year? As far as what's the improvement? Yeah, as far or as coverage recognition, he mentioned that as being one of he felt as one of the you know, being able to recognize quick what else the defense is trying to do. Yeah, uh, some routes that affects the route, some routes it doesn't. It depends on you know what what kind of passing game we're calling. Uh, so yeah, that, that's that, that's really just an experience quality. The more you experience it, the better you are at it. It's kind of like a, a defensive back recognizing a route. You know, the more you see the routes, the more you recognize them. Same way for receivers, the more you see the coverages, the more you see uh, the things you've got to do to attack them. But you know, some coverages doesn't matter. Man's man, so it's. You don't have to recognize man. You got to be able to go beat it. Um, and and uh, you know, I think BMAC and, and Coach Munkin have a lot of experience uh, developing guys in that area. Yeah, two questions here. One, anything new on Javon Bullard? And two, what kind of challenges does playing a guy like Willetis, who's so physically gifted, present to your defense? Uh, Bullard has a lower leg contusion, like below the knee. Um, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, I think he was limited a little bit yesterday. And, some of the, the workout stuff they did, but we, we fully expect him to be able to play. I, I haven't seen him practice. I haven't seen him myself, so we'll see more today. As far as Will Levis, this guy's got a bazooka for an arm. He can make all the throws. Uh, he's a really good athlete, and he's physically and mentally really tough. You know, he's wired uh, that kind of way to, to, to compete against you. you know, it's not like he's going to shy away from contact. He doesn't get flustered by rush. I mean, he's not afraid of standing in there and taking shots. And, you know, that's one of the number one qualities of a, of a quarterback. Is can, they, can, can they stand in there and, and be unaffected? And he has been. He's shown that. And he's actually shown the ability to, to break tackles and, and make plays out of the pocket. Kirby, I was uh, going over some of Mike Leach's post-game comments, and he was crediting your defensive line, which has been a hallmark of your defenses all the way back to Alabama. And he said that, not a pull, not a, a come up the field group, a pull and yank group. And then he also said that you're good at transitioning. When he talks about the transitioning part, um, can you what is he referring to? And as far as the, the the way you coach these defensive lines, can you go into some of the details of what he's explaining there? Um, I, I don't I don't know what he means by a pull and yank. I would think he means strike and and, 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 and attack. That's what we do with our defensive line. We strike, attack, and get off blocks. It's, it's block protection more than it is anything else. Um, but uh, transition could mean many things. You know, do they cover down hard when you throw a screen? Do they transition to cover down? Or do they transition from a run play to a conversion of transition to pass rush? Um, that's what a lot of defensive guys call transition is, can you convert from I'm playing the run to now I'm playing the pass? Um, but I don't, I don't know without asking him exactly what he means. Kirby, Kentucky's pass defense has been one of the best in the conference. Just what stands out about you know, how they've played the pass to you out there? Uh, well, their entire defense has been one of the best throughout the conference. And they have been consistently every year, let's be clear, because they have really good defensive coaches. Coach Stoops is very involved. Uh, Coach White does a tremendous job. Uh, they're very consistent because they're physical. They don't allow you to get the run game going. They play a lot of an odd front, uh, which makes for a really tough sledding in terms of large human beings uh, being inside. You don't move and displace them very well. Uh, they're very multiple in coverage. So we've had them on tape multiple times. I know going into uh, Tennessee, Mississippi State, you find yourself watching Kentucky a lot and uh, have a lot of respect for what they do defensively and the players they have that do it. They, they do a great job. Uh, Kirby, will you um – we talked a little bit about this the other night after the game, but when you're striving for protection, you know, day by day, week by week, season by season, what are some of the things that, you know, that have been effective for you to, to keep these guys wanting that, knowing it's not, it's always going to be not out of reach, but that's what you're striving for. And is there anything about this group in particular, I mean, coming off the national championship, that seems to have maintained that hunger? You, like I said, you spoke to that a little bit the other night, how tough that is to, people don't realize that, you know, keep it going day by day. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the pitfall of, of every profession or everything people do in, in society is being able to repeat habits. And can you do that? Can you do what you do better than the people in your profession 
on a daily basis and not get bored with monotony. It's, it's, it's hard to sustain anything in life, in your career, whatever it is. And if you want to be the best sports writer, you want to be the best broadcaster, you want to be the best, you got to do it better than the other people in your profession. And uh, you got to do that by recreating yourself, by, by consistently outworking someone. Uh, and sometimes people get comfortable. And when you get comfortable, you don't always, you're not always at your best. And we're trying our best to be at our best. That's our job. And uh, the challenge is uh, how do you do that better than the team you're up against? Yeah, Kira's talked about not wanting to be a selfish player and given all the time that you've been here. Have you got, do you think as a, an evaluator you've gotten better at identifying guys that are going to fit your culture and who have, you know are going to push through difficult times or when things might not necessarily be going your way? No, I don't, I don't know that we're better at identifying them. I think we certainly uh, delve into that conversation more than we used to, uh, but I don't know that we're better at it. I mean, I, I don't know. There's no, there's no written script or perfect DNA quality that you say. You assume all players you sign are unselfish and care about the program and uh, want to be here no matter what. But let's be realistic. That's probably not going to be the case. So uh, you do the best job you can, uh, and you try to move that needle while they're here. Because I don't think that, that people are uh, uh, where you can't change. And uh, you know, I think you develop that, and you get buy-in, and you sell it through your older players, and the older players sell it to the younger players. And you win some, and you lose some. Obviously, with uh, Nolan now, Jalen Walker got a lot of those snaps on Saturday. Uh, just what have you seen from him in terms of the play and just embracing that challenge? And uh, the second thing, have you seen Nolan kind of work with him closely in the film room or in practice to just help him get better? Yeah, Nolan's been a tremendous asset for us. The, the, the snaps uh, you're referring to on Jalen really weren't anything to do with Nolan's. Nolan's is, is with Robert Fields. But uh, Jalen has developed and is getting better and uh, still got a ways to go. And, um, He'll be the first to tell you that, that he's got to grow and get better. He did get more opportunities uh, the other night because of the, the passing situations that they went in. Um, but he's got to do more of those opportunities. He's got to continue to grow. Um, he has not taken what he does in practice to the field just yet. And uh, he, he practices sometimes better than he plays, and he's got to get through some of that anxiety, and that's part of being a freshman. But Nolan's done a great job with all those guys. He's, he's right there with them, teaching, cheering, uh, being a leader. Kirby, over to your right. Uh, going back two answers ago, you were talking about kind of staying uh, at the top of your field, being the best, and you said that getting comfortable can be one of the biggest obstacles to that. At this point in your team's journey, in your team's season, how do you keep players from getting comfortable? Uh, keep talking, recentering, uh, coming back to the, 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 the purpose and, and what we started all this about. And, you know, we, we, we did have the good fortune of not a lot of these guys were major parts of uh, the run that went on last year. So it was new for a lot of them. And uh, the energy and enthusiasm towards making a mark themselves and creating their own identity was the lead factor. Um, and sustaining that is now we're, we're, you know, we're getting in the fourth quarter. We're at the 15, 20 yard line, like trying to go finish off the, the regular season. That's got to be sustained. Um, so far, they, they, they've had a good attitude and they've approached uh, each week independent of the previous. Kirby, you use the word connection a lot to describe the bond between these players. And I saw the clip of you talking to them in the locker room saying that they're the most connected group that you had ever seen. What are some of the things that you see from them that make you say that? Well, the reactions to, to good and bad. You know, we, we say we're at our best when the worst happens. And that's where we want to be at our best. That's the, the, the spot you can be the most connected. It's easy to be connected when Lab McConkey runs 80 yards for a touchdown. I mean, uh, it, it's, it's hard to be connected when a guy misses you for a touchdown pass and you don't pout about it. You know, a guy uh, fumbles, a guy throws an interception, uh, a guy gives up a huge pass interference. You know, where's your connection now uh, when it's needed most? And um, that's the muscle that we like to say is our strongest muscle on our team, so if you got it, why not use it? And no reason not to use it if you got it. And I thought our kids did a good job of that the other night. Coach, 
finish it, I mean, I guess from broadcast and for me, or for discussing with uh, experiencing some white on this one word, is that just the nature of uh, the penguins you received, or was it a particular hit you might have taken? Not real sure. No, 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 no tell. Coach uh, Travell was one of these guys, uh, I guess the program guy, maybe waiters, kind of been around a long time, had a kind of way to turn to uh, you know, earn the position he's in right now. How much appreciation do you take for for guys like that who are willing to kind of make that sacrifice? It's awesome. It's, you know, the, the consummate team player that has played his role, is playing his role now. Um, still doesn't play a ton of snaps, but he uh, he makes the most of the snaps he takes. And, uh, he has tremendous toughness. And he has tremendous buy-in to the way we do things. Go back to Jamel Walker. Can you tell us about his recruitment to Georgia? I remember he went to Hutchinson. Were you guys on him beforehand and told him to go there and then come here and talk to him after Hutchinson? How, how did his recruitment work out? Uh, I thought he was a really good athlete from down there. And, uh, you know, we'd seen him when we recruited Richard. And uh, you know, he needed some development. He needed to, to go play some to be able to come in here and help us. And uh, he was willing to do that. And got, came in more ready to play than a kid from high school after being there. And, uh, He's done a good job since being here. Time for two more questions. Anybody? All right. Thank you.